time for a bit of an update on the garage, everybody. I'm sure there are some of you out there who are wondering what we've been up to, because we've certainly been pouring our minds and our wallets, and most definitely our wallets, most definitely, into getting this place uh, filled out around the edges and set up. And one of our next big steps is electrifying the building. So what we have here, this is, this thing was not cheap, that's what it is. Um, a 40 space, 40 circuit, square D QO, which is the only way I think I would go, although I have seen some Cutler Hammer boxes that I really liked. The QO ones have got the really neat indicator that tells you clearly when a circuit breaker is tripped. Unfortunately, they also have a tendency over time to burn these contact points if you turn things on and off with the breakers a lot. But I don't plan to do that, and um, it should be fine, shouldn't cause any trouble. I've solicited some bids from electricians, and the first one came in at some $3,200, and that was just to run power to the building, mind you. That was just to install a box and run power to the building, which frankly struck me as some sort of grand larceny or another. But we found a guy who did some work back in the mid-90s for my parents installing their furnace and air conditioning, and he's agreed to do it for, um, well, let's just say quite a bit less. Quite a bit less meaning about 500 bucks, plus the 200 or so that we have in the box. Anyway, there's 200 amp service going to be coming in here. The city wasn't sure they could provide that, but the reasoning behind that, maybe that's overkill. You know, so too is a 40 position breaker box, but I've already got uh, things found for about 20 of those breaker positions, and you know maybe more, because I'll probably end up adding more outlets than I've drawn out in my little schematic. But as it is, you know, I don't want there to be any question for a very long time that there is sufficient electrical power in this garage to do exactly what we want. So that's the reasoning behind having 200 amp service in here, especially since we know we're going to heat it and we're definitely going to heat the floor. Maybe do something with forced air depending on how well the floor heating works. And I'm not above adding air conditioning to this as opposed to being outside, busting my butt in 100 degree in the shade weather working on a car when I could have it say set to 80 in here and dehumidified. So I'm not above maybe air conditioning this at a future date. But so far the breaker box has been installed and this wire is truly impressive. This is the kind of wire that I don't know exactly what gauge this would be because I've never seen this stuff before. But this stuff is so thick you can't really bend it to speak of. I would assume they probably had to use a tool or just more force than I'm willing to exert right now to actually bend those wires into place. And on the outside of the building We've been pilfering power from the Roach Palace, but that kind of limits our options as to what we can do and run because all I have is just this one 20 amp ground fault circuit interrupting outlet out there that I rather hastily installed. i make sure I've got enough cord to do this here because that'd be fun to have the light quit me. I think they really ought to start leaving the sun on during the evening hours, you know what? But I guess I still got a curfew. We have a meter pad over by the other door, but they put that in totally the wrong place. Despite what I told them, I guess the key keeper didn't get the message. But I'm going to have a separate meter on this property, so get my own electrical bill. It's rare that you get to see inside one of these unless you are an electrician. And of course, there's that cardboard pad there. Most of the time, this thing would be riveted shut by the city. But that is where the electrical meter plugs in. Now this is pretty safe to do right now. Look at that, June 17, 2010. Inspected on line two. Well, we'll know who to blame if it doesn't work, I guess. But normally your electrical meter would click into place in those contacts right there. And then the city would come along and they would go ahead, as soon as I get this stupid thing back on, it says to put it back, so guess I'd better, even if I'm not the wire man to which they are speaking. Sounds like someone involved in a criminal enterprise. A wire man. <laughs> Around here we call them electricians, but normally the city has a little tag, or your electric company, if it's not the city as it is here, your electric company would go ahead and clamp that thing shut to keep you out of there and hopefully keep you from committing meter fraud. Anyway, that's the biggest news to date with the garage is that we are making headway on electrical stuff and I actually decided to hire this done just to play it safe because I'm not too terribly familiar with bringing electrical service into a building for the first time. 
I'll probably do a lot of the other stuff like the branch circuits myself, although I may hire some of them done. I may hire the lighting done. We're going to have a ton of fluorescent lighting out here. Like I say, the goal here is to basically have enough power to know that we can run what we want to out here and never have there be any question about it. So that's pretty much the latest news on the garage. I expect the electrician will probably be back here tomorrow, maybe running his trencher because the, uh, the electrical company and the city, they want to bring the power underground anymore these days. So they're going to have to dig a trench from the pole to the garage and that will probably be about 75 to 100 feet of digging. So it should be interesting to see what they do tomorrow.